Hello, I'm JW. This time I'm going to have a quick look at grid switches. And I've got a plate here from some cheapo brand which doesn't exist anymore. So I'm going to have a quick look at how they fit together and some possible things you might want to consider using them for and certain other things which seem popular in some areas but really are a load of old rubbish. So uh, let's uh, see what we've got here and then so we'll have a look at some others as well in a catalogue or whatever and see what sort of things are available. Now normal switches like this one here come assembled all in one piece. So basically a plate here, the switch on the front there and the terminals or whatever on the back. And of course you can only buy what the manufacturer makes available. So this is just a normal one gang light switch there. So if you wanted uh, anything that's pretty standard you can just go to the shops and buy that. But uh, of course that may not be appropriate in all situations because you might want some custom arrangement of different types of switches or various other devices in there. So that's really where grid switches come in. And uh, here we have some nasty cheap examples of things which you can't buy anymore because this range was discontinued some time ago. But the basic concept is pretty much the same for any manufacturer. And generally you get three separate components. So what I've got here is the switch itself. This just has to be a normal 10 amp light switch there. Just a uh, one way switch there with the two terminals. So that's your switch. Then you have this piece which is a metal frame. This is what's either called the grid on some manufacturers or others call it a yoke. Basically it's a frame which you can fit the switches into. This has have positions for two switches but you can get them in various sizes. And then the final component is the cover plate. Again this is for uh, two switches or devices and this one has to be plastic. Just like other normal things you can get these in metal in various finishes and plastic and uh, whatever else. And again, this is a two position one, but you can get these in uh, single two, three and four. And in some particular cases, even more than that. Now, the basic concept of these is you can buy these two items here and then fit in whatever other switches and things you would like. So if, for example, you wanted a switch and you also wanted a big red neon indicator next to it, then that's what you can achieve here. So with this particular range, these switches just snap into the grid here from the front, got little spring bits on the top there. So it's just a question of uh, positioning the uh, switch on the front there. And then it will just snap down in like that. And again, the same thing with this uh, neon indicator here. Again, that just presses down like that. Two screw holes here which go into your back box in the usual way. And then the cover plate would go over the front. And then that's secured in place with two additional screws, which happen to be top and bottom on these ones. Obviously not so they don't uh, obviously get in the way of the ones underneath. So that way you can have, in this case, say a switch there and a red neon indicator next to it. Now, of course, that's just one example. And uh, here's another one I made earlier, which has two neon indicators in it, orange and red. So underneath there, it's pretty much the same deal same cover plate there and it's just the same uh, grid or yoke there with those two modules snapped in. Now so these ones are CED branded which they uh, don't make anymore. I just happen to have a certain number of these because these were used in a previous video for some other purpose. Now what I've got here of course is just a uh, few neon indicators and a switch because it just happens that's what I've got uh, here and uh, what's sort of left over from other bits and pieces. Now if you want to buy these things there's usually a massive range of devices available. We've just got a switch and a neon there but you can get switches in various different ratings. So 10 amp uh, light switch here but you can also get a two-way switch of course, intermediates and you can also get things like a 20 amp double pole switch to control a washing machine or immersion heater or something like that. And you can get the ones with a little key hole in so you can only switch it on after you have the appropriate key, dimmers, and then there's all kinds of other various things like sort of coaxial outlets and flex outlets and even blank modules if you uh, want to have some weird number of positions that's not accommodated for. So very large number of things there. We'll have a look at some of those in a catalogue later. Now if you want to buy these things, the most important thing to remember is that grids and switches from different manufacturers are not compatible with each other. So if you're going to buy like these ones, the CED ones, then you're going to be stuck with buying the switches and the grids and the cover plates all from that manufacturer. Other ones are not going to be compatible and uh, most manufacturers of any size make ranges like this. So you're going to have to stick with that particular manufacturer's set of stuff throughout. You can't sort of mix and match between different manufacturers. The only exception to that is that some companies that make dimmers do make dimmers and then you can get an adapter piece so you can fit their dimmer into 
a grid system from some other manufacturer, but that's pretty much the only exception. Everything else is going to have to come from the same place and also the same range because over the years certain manufacturers have made grid switches in a certain style and then for whatever reason they change those and of course the new ones were not compatible with the old system so just because it says MK on the back doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be the same because MK, which I'll look at a bit later, the new ones are called Grid Plus and the old ones were called Grid and the two are totally incompatible and don't fit into each other so just be aware of that. Very old ones uh, may not be available anymore and you might end up having to replace the entire thing if you can't get a replacement part. And that's really the other benefit of these systems. If you had a big, say, a bank of, say, 24 switches for, say, an industrial or commercial installation, if one switch breaks, you can then just replace that single module on its own and not have to replace a whole panel of 24 switches, which, of course, would be rather expensive. So uh, some benefits there as well. Now let's have a look at this uh, here. This is the uh, Rocker grid system. This is from Crabtree. And as you see here, the various components are similar sort of concept. So you've got the cover plates, individual modules there, some indicators and switches there. And then you've got the actual grids or yokes that those fit into. Now these are slightly different in that the bottom just sort of hooks in there. And then the top is actually fixed in with a single screw. Now, just move on to the next page. See, they come in various uh, styles and finishes there. And this is the sort of sizing that you can get. So anything from one single unit there up to various combinations with 12 on this page. And the deal with these is that once you get above four, then it's basically two rows of the same combinations as before. So two rows of three with that one, two rows of four, three rows of three, and three rows of four, so it's three grids on that one, and obviously two on these. And again, you see the grids here, then it's the, so the 6903 has three units uh, inside there, and then you just use two of those for that box, or three for that one. And then the mounting box is the same kind of thing, just got uh, two or three fixing points on either side. And the very large ones, the 18 and the 24, those have six per grid. And in the case of the 24 there, it's going to be four separate grids there. And again, we see that at the bottom there, four of those. And again, there's going to be four fixing points either side of the boxes. Now, in terms of switches, I've uh, got some examples here, just your normal uh, on and off switches in various combinations, single pole, double pole, light switches in various styles. And we've got the uh, key operated one here with the little metal key that goes in. And that's normally used for things like emergency lighting. So you can turn the power to those off so they've run on batteries. Make sure the battery's obviously working. Then switch them on again and use the key there to make sure they don't get accidentally turned off by someone else. And the keys are usually called fish keys, mainly because the MK one was in the shape of a fish. We'll have a look at that a bit later. These here you can get switches with various uh, markings on them, such as boiler, dishwasher, fridge, and so on. Uh, it says there the intent of those is to make uh, kitchen or utility room control panels if you want such a thing. These tend to come in kitchens where the designer has decided that it's an appropriate thing to have a big panel of these and have a switch for every single appliance so you can uh, basically turn everything off from a single point. In the real world, not desperately useful, but certain kitchen designers seem to like those. And there's an example of the 24 plate there, that's the gold one, but obviously other colours available as well. Now the back boxes, as you see here, it's just the normal uh, standard size for that one. The larger ones either have two fixings on either side there, and then the very big ones have either three or four. Now this is the MK uh, version of this, this is called Grid Plus. So a very similar idea there, you just have your uh, row or rows of switches in various combinations and uh, different cover plates uh, to suit there. That must be a screwless uh, clip-on version. But in terms of what's available, it's pretty much the same situation. So you've got various different types of switches there, some red ones there, and uh, in black and graphite for some of those as well. Things like doorbells and whatever. These are attractive switches, which means that uh, when you press them, they will spring back into the original position when you release. So, like a momentary operation there. So, I'll do things like doorbells or call buttons. And again, in various colours there. And as with the crabby ones, you can get them with various engravings on, such as boiler and dishwasher and whatever for those uh, kitchen control panel sort of things. 
and there's some of those sort of heater oven and so on with and without neon indicators as you may have guessed i don't particularly like that kind of arrangement mainly because these switches and a big block in the corner of the kitchen will basically never be used because people generally don't turn off any of the fixed appliances unless something's gone wrong with them or they need to be replaced which of course is uh, pretty much uh, somewhere between once every 10 years and never but uh, nevertheless these things exist if uh, people want them here's the mk uh, key switches there and you see the key there is sort of shaped like a fish in a sort of very crude arrangement so hence the name fish key there and that one's obviously marked with the emergency lighting test on the front but you could use those for whatever you wanted it's just something where you want a switch to be available but not going to be turned on or off accidentally by just people using it uh, for whatever purpose these are the indicator modules so similar to those cheap ones we saw the three colors red amber and green this particular catalog also has the uh, filament or incandescent ones which uh, are only 21 to 36 volts so or a uh, specialized item there and then dimmers various uh, types there and the dimmers i said earlier are pretty much one of the only things you can get some dimmers from other manufacturers that will fit into mk and various other manufacturers grids if you wanted to have a very specific dimmer this one in the middle here this large one it's a single dimmer so it's only got one knob and the reason it's got that sort of blank piece attached to the side is purely for that that it's actually a 400 watt dimmer so it's been made larger to accommodate for the extra size of components inside and of course they get quite warm in operation so it's just to spread out and dissipate the heat so when it's installed it just looks like a dimmer and a blank but it's all in one single molded part and then you've got things like your fuses uh, cord outlets and even things like buzzers and other stuff if you happen to need those and the cover plates again pretty much the same idea so you've got the various uh, combinations there and then those which have uh, more than one row just have a grid for each individual row so this uh, 18 way for example will have three grids which hold six units each and if you have a look at the bottom here just tells you the code number of grids you would need obviously you need three of those for that particular plate now this is also mk grid switch but this is the old grid which is not compatible with that new grid plus in the slightest this is an older system so this catalog is from 1976 these were made up to the sort of mid 1990s when the new one obviously was released and you can see these ones have uh, switches and various other items as well but they fit in a totally different way these go in from the back and then there's these metal clips which just press over the edge of the frame there to hold them in position but again it's the same kind of concept you've got various switches of various styles there sort of momentary push buttons red amber and green uh, indicators there and again there's things like the uh, key switch the fuse module flex outlet and a blank plate and this is what the old grid things actually look like so back boxes are fairly standard on most of these the spacing is basically the same so in a lot of cases if you've got an old back box that's sort of cemented in the wall or something and the whole front needs to be replaced a lot of the time you can keep the same back box and uh, newer grids things will fit on but in terms of the grids themselves and the switch module of course these are the old ones which you can't get anymore so that's all of those there but again concept is pretty much the same and the same kind of arrangement with the back boxes and the uh, grids and the front plates so that's a look there at uh, grid switches and so that's just a few different types there most manufacturers actually make these and say so the main thing to remember if you're going to buy those you do need to get all of the components from the same manufacturer and also from the same range from that manufacturer as generally there's not a great deal of compatibility between them dimmers maybe being one exception but pretty much everything else is going to be a different fixing or different size or some other incompatibility so uh, that's it for this video. Until next time, thanks for watching.